Okay, we are going to be going live here in a minute, Armando. Where is the video? People asking me already. Yeah, we're going to get there. Turn your phone off, though. Hey, Armando, I think we're live, baby. Okay. Yeah. So people are already asking. Oh, hold on, let me record it because I screwed it up last time. Hold on. Yeah, we are live, man. Right. We are live. Mr. Armando Gallo in the house. Hello, again. hi guys. Hey, Sorry, a little bit was two minutes late, huh? That's okay. You know, technology, we got to make it, we, we have okay. to make it work. All righty. How, how you doing, Armando? Great. How are you yeah. doing, Chris? Have I'm you been right. paddling on the Pacific Ocean today? Yeah, yeah, paddled on, I did about three miles today. It was really good. So, um, wow. yeah, it's really relaxing to get out there on I the water. You can even do 300 feet, man. <laughs> no, you'd be, you'd be surprised. Um, so well, I slept until one o'clock, guys. Come on, Armando. I was up at six a.m. People are asking me what if I, I felt how I deal with the lockdown. God, I love it, man. I'm my own boss here. You know, I do whatever <laughs> I want. I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Armando, um, obviously, a lot last week. We had Paul Whitehead and Gail Tattersall join us. Yeah. It's a lot to produce. And, you know, I wanted to get together again with you because, uh, you know, a, a big part of uh, my friendship with you is, you know, just sitting one on one talking about your images and, you know, some of your experiences and, and all that good stuff. So I've selected uh, some images that we're going to talk about today. I said three. Surprise think, me, man. Surprise me. Oh, I'm going to surprise you. I think I picked more. Uh, well, we're probably going to go more into like six or seven pictures because I think they all are connected in some way. But before we get going here, um, I just want to remind people that we do have a fundraiser that we're supporting here. It's No Kid Hungry. So if you go to the event site. Let it more uh, clear, who are we supporting? No Kid Hungry. No Kids Hungry. Yes. We don't want any kids to go hungry. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so we've raised no, $125 so far. Uh, so it'd be great if we could kind of uh, add to that anyway. So uh, let, let's go ahead and get started. What do you think, Armando? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me find. Let me find a picture. So the that first we... person that ordered one of my photographs today, the money they will pay for the photograph is going to go to uh, to the no kids angry. So you better give it and <laughs> give me, pay me a lot of money for that photograph. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, man. All right. Well. But you know what? I love starting. We started your show with this two years ago, and uh, it just it made me happy. So, oh, picture. tell me a little bit of that handsome young man. Oh, well, this photo was taken by Barbara Woods, and uh, she was 21. She came down to Italy to see me on her, on her 21st birthday, and uh, we fell in love that Sunday, that Sunday, that summer, and. Uh, she took this picture of me. So I look very happy and in love, you know, and uh, we got married the following year. We spent the seventies together. So this is uh, a photograph that ended up, uh, we were in uh, St. Peter's Square, really, in August, 1971. I have a gray velvet uh, hat here. And uh, the shirt was, I think was blue, kind of dirty blue and, uh, and, and, and I, in 72, I changed magazine. I went from Chow 2001. I had a, a, an offer that I couldn't refuse because they would pay me three times as much. I went to work for Qui Giovani and, uh, and this photograph ended up on, the, on, the, uh, on my weekly column. It was pop music and, and news, you know, and that was my photograph there. This photograph recently, I found it on the on eBay. Uh, someone in France was selling it for seventy bucks. <laughs> Did you buy it? Vintage photographs, <laughs> <laughs> and I just stole it from there. I stole it back, you know. And, uh, and uh, so it's very strange, isn't it? That this uh, this is it. it. Was original black and white photograph, you know? 
Yeah. That's wonderful, wonderful picture to start with, Armando. Thank so you. I've got a, a fun ride for us to, uh, you know, to go down. Um, huh, where do we want to start? You've got so much, Armando, it's just ridiculous hey, to try to pick start, anything. Let, what happened? I'm going to start here. Okay, you start wherever you want. Can you read this? Hey. hey. Emancipate yourself, yes. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. No one but uh, we can do this. We all, all right. can do this. And this is the game. Bob and 39 years ago today, uh, before leaving Jamaica, I, I went to uh, St. Anne where he was buried four days before. Um, I went to the state funeral, and, but I didn't, I didn't follow the, the, the convey. You know, there was so much confusion there. Everybody was following the, 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 the body, the coffin, and he was going to be buried in St. Anne where he was born. And I decided to go uh, just before going back to LA and, uh, and when we went up there, uh, Rita Marley was there and uh, uh, Barbara then she took one of her earrings and she gave it to, uh, to, to Rita Marley. I said, why did you give her the earring? Well, I wanted to give her something, you know? So mm -hmm. good memories there. And, uh, and then so in, I have a five years after his passing, I was in Italy, I was living and went back to Italy and I, I, put, I was talking about this Bob Marley's book that we did it from Friday night to Monday morning. Mm -hmm. this, is, um, this is the book that we put together then, you know? And uh, on the last page there was, there's, uh, there you are. There's a picture of me next to the grave of Bob Marley in St. Anne. Oh. The other photo there, there you go. And he was buried uh, next door to the little hut where he was born. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, so let's move. Uh, let's let's move on to uh, another picture. This is, you know, I keep saying they're like some of my favorite pictures, but every I don't know. I can't pick one, Armando, but I am going to pick one. So. Here we go. Yeah, that's a, now, hold that's on, let me a get good that. one. That's there a go. really good one. Uh, you know, I, this is the Joshua Tree Tour. We, this was a concert at, the, they used to call it the Meadowland. Now it's called, is in, uh, in New Jersey. And uh, you two were finishing the first leg of the American tour of Joshua Tree behind May 19th. 87 and uh, you know when I met him the month before they bought all my photographs and uh, so I went to uh, at this you know we decided to do a set of 20 slides and I did 40 sets uh, of dupes and I went to London to uh, deliver the 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 the, the, the dupes uh, to Island Records, the idea is to give all these pictures for free to all the record to all the record distributors in in, in the world. And uh, I told I told uh, Bono because he said, "Do you think they can use these pictures? You know, if you give them to them for free, they will use them for sure." You know, in the eighties, people were paying a lot of money for them. So uh, that that's what we did. And while I was at Island Rec at Island Records in London. Uh, Someone, the, the, uh, someone called from uh, New York, you know, and, uh, and so the guy gave me on the phone and said, hey, I'm here, blah, 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 you know, God, Amanda, you should be here. I can come. So I got on a plane the following morning and I went <laughs> and they were playing the last concert. So, uh, one, and, Armando, uh, real quick. This is, a, this is a folder of to me explain everything. This is when the stage, melt with the audience and um, where I am um, is hot like in a sauna there's so much energy there and I'm sure that 
uh, people like Jeff Kravitz and, and Neil and Neil Preston can uh, can uh, can agree with that. You know, uh, is uh, I was coming in uh, at the end of the concert. I was coming in always soaking wet. This photograph was published as a two-page spread in Italian magazine called Max, and uh, I was so happy because you know. Uh, uh, this was one of my favorite sh shots, and of course, you don't see Bono, but but there it is. There it is. Well, I got one more. I'm going to follow up with Bono that I really like. So bear with me just a second, okay? And that's why I was going to kind of get to Armando is that that photo to me represents something where you are very very close to the stage. You're not just a fan. I mean, you're right there, uh, and you you said it was like super hot, super humid, and, and kind of uh, intense. In that moment, it's the well, fan the, was the animal energy, you know, of the of the, yeah, the animal yeah. energy of the of the of the concert, you know. Yeah, right on. Um, all right, hold on. And this, I love the story behind this one foot, this photo. And Armando, don't let me down. Ha! <laughs> Tell well, me about this one. This is a this is a photograph that I trashed originally because uh, it, we're in Las Vegas, April, 1987, and I flew from Rome to go and see these kids that, uh, that totally, I fell in love with the album, this, the music of uh, uh, jo the Joshua Tree. And I said, who are these kids, man? I wanna see these four Irish kids on, on stage. I want to photograph them. So I went and I went to Las Cruces, New Mexico. And after that, there was a Las Vegas show. I photographed the entire show of, of Las Cruces and, and, uh, uh, and um, Alvinia Bridges was the PR. And she said that you can, do, can shoot the entire show, but the band would like to see the photographs. And I said, great. So uh, I, uh, I, 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 it, was, it was a Friday night. Uh, and so I couldn't even develop the picture. So I went to Las Vegas, I showed the show in Las Vegas, and then we were going to Los, Los Angeles. It was a full moon night when I was going to, uh, to the stadium. It was uh, uh, twilight zone, there was this big moon coming up, you know? So I was trying to, uh, this, uh, I was trying to uh, reflect this on stage. So I was playing with a, with a light coming from the back stage, from the back of the stage and, uh, and this, uh, you know, I was trying, I didn't know at the time, but when I saw the photographs, I thought I fucked up because all the photographs were like a kind of grainy and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, subconsciously, I was trying to give the same effect that um, Anton Corbin gave to the uh, publicity picture they did for the Joshua Tree cover and stuff like that. And, uh, and this particular photograph, I, I trashed it and uh, I went before uh, leaving the room because I had to uh, leave the, a carousel with all the photographs so the band would see them, you know, and, uh, and, and I went back into the trash and I picked up the slide that I, uh, and I put it in, into a, this, the slide frame, you know, the, 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 and I put it in first position of the carousel. So this was the first photograph that, that the band had seen, and and apparently Bono fell in love with it, and that's a uh, 15 minutes later they called me up. I was in, uh, we were at the San San Marquis, and they told me to go out and wait to, uh, by the pool, and I was happy to. I wasn't happy to go. I wanted to show the picture myself, but okay, I understand it. So, and when I went sat by the pool, there was um, Alex Haley was there. He was the president uh, of. Uh, the Amnesty International uh, that uh, and he organized the the uh, conspiracy of hope tour the year before. So I had a fantastic time there because I talked to him and uh, I had him in one of the photographs of the Peter Gabriel's book that I just had published. So I and I had a copy in the car. So I went in the in the parking lot, you know, I got it and I gave it to Alex Haley, you know. And then I I went back to the I was cold. I went back to the room and. Uh, and that when Bono said, we called you because we wanted to tell you why we love your pictures, you know, so. <laughs> Amazing. So you almost threw that photo away, I think you said, right? Yeah, because, you know, it, you know it, when you take the photographs, you know, and then, you know, 
it's never like you imagined it. It was very, very rare that you can take a photograph and then you see it and you go, oh my God, this is good. Like I want, like I've seen it when, when you know, at least at the time, at the time we were shooting with film, you know, you don't see the results until you have it, uh, 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 have it developed. And at the time I, I used to push my film one or two stops, you know, and, but probably this one was taken with Fuji 1600. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was a little bit blown up. Probably I had, uh, I must have had a filter, a little filter here, you know, and, uh, but there you go. It's very, it's a saintly picture, you know, and uh, the Joshua Tree album was describing to me, was describing the, the lack of spirituality that pervaded in, in America and, uh, in the eighties, you know, and uh, probably even now. <laughs> so Armando, I'm going yeah. to steal what you said last time. Is it trash? Is it art? Exactly. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Exactly. Oh, man, this is no, so much fun. Uh, so um, can I pick something else? Yeah, this is All fun. Right. <laughs> All right, this is fun. Oh, my goodness. OK, so cool. pardon me? We should tell the people that are tuning in, you know, that these are photographs that uh, you picked up to uh, to do a, a photo exhibition two years ago, and uh, yeah, yeah, you you printed what twelve large prints that were on on the walls, and then we did a a, 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 a show. There were maybe yeah, it was your first show, and I may I may convince you to let me. Just... should be in a fucking book, man. You know, but <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm so lazy, you know. <laughs> but this yeah, will this will help if someone transcribe what I'm saying. I hate to sit down and talk about my things, you know. I know, but it's so important, Armando. Hey, to that point, I'm gonna- oh, I like to talk you. about my things. I would like to sit down and type, you know. I was <laughs> typing this big article and, and my, my my wrist hurts, you know, because when you start <laughs> typing again, you know, I had eyes afterwards. I was writing about Rose McGowan and, and all the craziness that happened. The dog, the media dog fight that, Went on, went on this past week with the New York Times and the New Yorkers. You know, they're trying to say that Ronan Farrell invented his book. You know, that's motherfuckers, yeah. you know, <laughs> envious, you know. Hey, enough, you well, what's your language, Armando? <laughs> oh, well, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. I got a police award, you know, you know, it, 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 you know, they don't give it just to anybody, you know. It, 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 anyway. Anyway. He writes so well, man, you know, it's like, he, he writes so well, he's like watching your own movie, you know? Yeah, I, yeah he, he really is a wonderful writer. Um, okay, so more fun stuff. You ready? Yeah. I'm just going to pick. Here we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. That was the Hollywood Palladium. I must have been maybe 92, something like that. And uh, so, 91, 92, and I was so, I just had a big argument with someone. There was this Italian uh, uh, photographer lady and she went to, uh, she, I just found out from uh, and, and them records that there was this girl from Italy that she said she was a correspondent for Tutto magazine, you know. I said, you still work for Tutto magazine? I said, yeah, well, this girl, she said she's the corner. And uh, so who is she? Well, she sort of they described who she was, you know. And then I found her here with the photographers, you know. So uh, <laughs> I scared, I scared her off. She she split, man, you know. And then I turned around. Uh, this amazing guy came on stage, you know, and uh, and I took this photo. This is like, you know, in a way, uh, this photo reminds me the way I attacked this this woman, you know, that was trying to uh, get, uh, not get my job, but, but trying to, by saying that she was the correspondent for the magazine I was correspondent of, she, she put some doubts mm -hmm. in the people that were helping me here in Los Angeles, you know, and I was coming back to Los Angeles, you know, I spent uh, five years in, in, in Italy and Europe in traveling, I had a publishing company, and I, and so I decided to come back to LA, you know, and I was just reconnecting again you know and uh, so probably this photo describe all the oh, the anger that i had in that moment as well and um, i had a beautiful interview with him uh, 
he was writing the music of um, of a movie that Johnny Depp directed, and he he was really he was really lovely. He was a very gentle soul, you know, easy, you know, and uh, and in Iggy Pop uh, is is a is a, an icon. Yeah, he's kind of the, one of the grandfathers of uh, true punk rock. Um, yeah, which is kind of cool, Armando. So we're going to try to do a connection here, okay? So Iggy Pop, um, obviously very um, influential uh, musician. Oh, Bowie. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me find it. So if you guys don't know, um, David Bowie uh, co-wrote "Lust for Life" with Iggy Pop, and there's another connection which we're going to make in a minute, but not. Not hold on, let me find it. Oh, Armando, where did it I go? You were doing maybe. I have a photograph with uh, Michael Actions and uh, and Iggy Pop. Hang on, let me find it's that. Was the wrong photo. Up. Hang on, <laughs> Te technical difficulties. I need to find it. I didn't remember. I shot Iggy Pop also in uh, Dallas, and the opening band was this band from Los Angeles. Uh, but that was Iggy Pop and 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 in excess, and I just didn't bother to shoot this uh, opening band. They were, they were Gun and Roses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is um, it's up. Uh, it this is great. It's funny because I was looking at this. Uh, let me get this book. I was saying uh, that I was at a publishing company in Italy in the eighties. I was publishing rock books and this is a book on boy and uh oh, I had oh, an hold on. Here. Armando and this is the Armando show it again yeah there the we go photograph. look at that I opened the book with this photograph <laughs> <laughs> nice so David Bowie co-wrote Lust for Life with Iggy Pop right which was in the movie uh Train Spotting do you remember Train Spotting oh yes yeah, oh, wow. wait a second. Me 1997, 95. Beautiful movie. People said it glorified drug use, but I think it did exactly the opposite. Oh, it's fair. People... It's fair. It should have the movie should have been shown in in high schools, you know. But, yeah, but the 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 lead in, in that movie, and he's just a, a you very, McGregor. Very handsome. Yeah, uh, Ewan McGregor. So let's. There we go. We're gonna we're gonna connect it. Oh, nice. Talk to me about that picture, Armando. Oh. This is one of the uh, many photographs that I've been lucky to to uh, take in the in my past twenty years. I kind of when I came back to Los Angeles, I rejoined the Hollywood Foreign Press, and uh, I met this wonderful woman that uh, twenty uh, nine years ago, and we got married. Cheryl and uh, Cheryl had worked uh, a, a life like crazy in raising two two girls and they were now 19 and 21 when I met her and uh, and she was very very busy she was working six seven days a week you know so what do you do for fun you know or on a Sunday morning I tried to go to the movies you know uh, because I only have probably some Saturday morning Saturday morning and uh, I, I go to the moon that's what I love to do I, I love to have popcorn and diet coke and see a movie sometime I, I went to see color purple she said i was the only one in this in the cinema yeah on a saturday morning who goes to the cinema and said, so anyway so i rejoined the hollywood the hollywood foreign press the week that i asked her to marry me and uh, and uh, so i could take her to to uh, see a screening of of upcoming movies in the in, in the studios you know so uh and uh, so I re by rejoining the audience foreign press, uh, I, I have this amazing access to uh, these movie stars that uh, every weekend they, uh, and during the week as well, they, they promote their new up upcoming movies. So here I am in, a, in one of the meetings with the audio foreign press and, and maybe a colleague is asking a question, you know, and, uh, and you can see, you can see is, um, is, is, um, this, I always treat these uh, situations, you know, like a live concert. And uh, uh, here, uh, the, the artist is uh, emotionally naked, you know, he's, he's listening to the question and he's formulating his answer in his brain, you know, and that's, and that's so he's not posing for me, you know, but I can, 
Uh, and that got a selection of amazing photographs of this great artist, you know. So you is a very, very, is a very, very open, uh, very honest uh, man, you know, and uh, he got better with the years, you know, and uh, and he's very, he's a fantastic actor and a great human being. So Armando, you know, what's really funny about, I mean, obviously we're, uh, we're doing this from our homes. We're in the, uh, going on the third month of uh, shelter in place. Um, I think it's easing, but uh, did you pick up your phone just a few minutes ago? Who was that? I don't know. Cheryl did it. <laughs> That's lovely. Um, and what's interesting too, and I don't want to get too political, obviously at all, but uh, you know, some people are talking about whether it's appropriate to wear a mask or whether it's even even essential when you go out. Um, do me a favor, guys. Wear a mask. If yeah. at worst, it's polite. So again, don't want to make yes, it political. The first but... time, I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. The first time I went to Japan, I went with Japan I, in November 1975 with PFM, the Italian rock band PFM. Uh, they had a release there on Warner Pioneer, and we went on tour in Japan there. And uh, and I remember there were these people in the street with masks. White mask, and then in in in, in the, we we went on on in the train to to Kyoto, and there were some people with this white mask. I said, "What? Why these people wearing? Mask? Oh, they have a cold. What? Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a cold. You have a cold. If you sneeze, you give the cold to someone else. You know, right. but as out of out of." courtesy out of good education you know in japan I found in japanese people were really uh so wonderful and and gentle and and kind to to wear a mask because uh, they had, and they said this was 1975 they've been doing it forever you know so you know if you do it when you have a cold which is really very nice very very gracious to do you know because you go Sometimes you go to you go to work, you have a bit of a flu, you give the flu to all the other people, you know. Right. Once I got the flu from Cheryl Stone. <laughs> <laughs> After the interview, she was she was sniffing, she had this sorry, Sharon, you know, you're wonderful, but the, but it's very easy, you know. You get we we get so used to that we have a cold, we have a little flu, and we go around and we give it to other people, you know. Come on. This, and at this moment, we have this killer virus that you know so it's not it's a very very little effort to wear a mask thank you yeah. all right let's talk about a few more photos okay does that sound yeah. cool yeah all right so let me see if i can find one for us this is so much fun armando you've got so much work it's it's almost um impossible to pick it's impossible look here man hold on look here oh my god what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> those all your can slides. Can someone come and help me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So here's a really cool one because I think it shows um, kind of the the spread of your 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 um, tenure, so to speak. You've been uh, you've been photographing for literally decades. So we're gonna start with one. This is really powerful to me. Hold on, let me let me move it. Ha, ha, ha. It's uh, it's a little bit on the red. Uh, you know, it's, well, it's it's anyway. It's more clear here. We are MTV Awards, uh, Universal Amphitheater, probably 1992, September 1992, and the, the year before, I had met. Uh, oh, come on, Eddie Vedder, and uh, and I said to him the way before was was at the beginning of Pearl Jam, you know, and I said I'm sorry, I'm 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 sure you get this from everybody, you know, but I'm 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 an Italian journalist. I wanted to convey to you that what you're doing is fantastic, is great, you know, and he and he goes, Are you Armando Gallo? And without looking, I, yeah. I said, I have your book, your Genesis book, you know. And so I gave him, I had these little stickers with my with my uh, uh, name and phone number, you know. So I gave it to him, give me a call, man. And he's, 
he put it on he put it on his on his lips. And some an English an English photographer took a picture of it. He never gave me the photo, but it was so funny. So we met. In, in, he called me. He called me up. I had a friend staying with us, you know. And he said, "Oh, this guy Eddie called up. He was ever so nice." I know. He said, he said, he said that we're playing the Viper Room, you know. I said, Eddie, Eddie Vella, you know. So he called me up, but I had a message too late. And uh, so the following year, I bumped into him uh, in, in the backstage area of the uh, amphitheater, you know, and, uh, and I said to him, Eddie, can, can, we come, can you come here? So I took him away from the crowd and we went behind the trailer here. And I said, I need to take a couple of shots of you, man, you know? So he's, oh, he said, oh God, you know? So he sat there and, uh, and uh, I saw there was reserve for artists was there. I knew that was there. I took the picture. After developing the picture, I realized there was a, a, cat, a, a, a can of, um, a sardine can by, her, by his foot. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's okay. So we're going to bring it up to a little bit more recent with Eddie Vedder. And then that's just the sort of comparison I like to do with you because you've been around for a long mm. time. Tell me about that, Armando. Yes, this one. Uh, he did the music for um, Sean Penn movie about the wild. What was the title of it? Uh, just playing wild. Eh? Just playing wild. Wild? Just wild? And... Um, but this kid that goes away, goes to Alaska, and he and he dies in in Alaska. He really gets stuck in the in the winter there. And, he to live off the and so uh, Eddie Vedder wrote all the songs for this movie. And we are here at Paramount. <clears throat> there's a Paramount big, the major, the main screen at Paramount. There's a big lobby, and that uh, that night uh, there were lots of people, uh, and he performed probably three songs from. Uh, from the movie, and although nobody said you can't bring any cameras, you can't take any pictures, you know, <laughs> don't tell me I can't, I can't take any pictures because that's the moment where <laughs> yeah, I'm not to take pictures. <laughs> oh man, uh, we're gonna keep going here. Um, hmm. He got yeah. the Golden Globe anyway for that. Oh, did he? Really? Was, probably it was 2009 because uh, it was the year uh, that. Uh, the Golden Globe went black because there was a, 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 a screenwriter's uh, 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 strike. strike, and so we didn't go on the air. He was very happy, so he didn't have to wear, wear a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't have to go on air, yeah, because he's, uh, he's pretty reserved, I think, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah? All right, hang on. I, mean, I have a sister to, to have an interview with him. <laughs> now, we're going we're gonna to really date you here, okay? This is such a the really this was before i was born but it's still obviously let's see if it comes up here there we go tony oh this is um yeah this this photograph it's it's on the on the package on the box set of uh led zeppelin four uh and uh, uh, jimmy page bought three or four four pictures of from this concert two cigarettes uh is this in New York? Um, this this is uh, the Sunday, uh, so probably it's July July 4, 1971, and uh, uh, Led Zeppelin came down the day before, and the, and the, oh, and then the following day they were playing uh, a concert in uh, at the Vigorelli Stadium in, in Milan. It was part was a big mistake. It was part of the Canto Giro. Was a a touring, a touring uh, uh, rock show that all Italian Italian uh, record companies put together, and they had their best, uh, uh, their upcoming star uh, with their new singles, and we and 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 they were visiting maybe twelve or fifteen Italian towns. With all the, everybody would do their their song, you know. It was called Cantagiro, and somehow uh, the, an Italian promoter called David Zard convinced uh, Led Zeppelin to come and play only half an hour for the Canta Giro, assuring them that they would have 20,000 people. You know, Led Zeppelin weren't very big at the time. You know, they were just getting bigger. And so they came down and uh, 
but they didn't count the fact that the people that went to see the Cantagiro that night didn't care about the Cantagiro that came from the for Led Zeppelin, and uh, and they and there were more people than they than they expected. So the the people just uh, crashed the entrance. Uh, the police uh, chasing them. Police got lost their heads. They panicked and they start throwing uh, throwing uh, uh, tear gas into the stadium, and and one arrived on the stage. I was on the stage. There are some pictures of me taking pictures uh, from the stage, and uh, and they the band played three numbers, and they stopped in the middle of uh, What a Lot of Love, and they when the tear gas arrived on the on the stage, you know, and uh, it was so funny because there was an attempt before. Uh, this was this was maybe six months later, and the Wembley Arena. Uh, uh, Robert Plant called me up and he said, tell, tell people to blow the smoke. If we, are, if we all blow the smoke, the, the tear gas goes away, you know? So I, 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 thought, I said that to, in Italian and, uh, and, uh, and everybody was giving me the fingers, you know? <laughs> anyway. No, not you, but, Armando. Uh, this, but this second photograph at the sports, at the uh, Wembley Arena, I, I had two tickets and uh, I didn't have a photo pass, but I managed to get uh, uh, Robert Plant's attention uh, and he called me in and so, and, uh, and I managed to take those photographs. Uh, very, very nice. And very I remember nice. Peter Grant looking at him and said, who's this guy? Is there a random from Italy, remember? <laughs> <laughs> oh, where do I want to, are, are you good with time, Armando? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Am I going anywhere? We are not going now, man. <laughs> I just have to get dinner ready in a little bit. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hang on. All right. Uh, here's one for now. I have to say that I, I think the, the the next band or the photo band, whatever. Not real fond of their music, but I think they are um, incredible business people. Yeah, well, this I had a fantastic time with Kiss. You know, we are. I know exactly where this is because there's a there's a guy I can't remember his name. He's putting together an amazing book, a diary book of Kiss uh, in the seventies, and he got thirty of my pictures. He paid them already. The book is coming out. And uh, and he, he dated this photo. This I think was uh, February 26 in, in at the forum in Los Angeles, February 26 or 1976. Uh, we uh, the uh, Kiss did a huge photo call at the at the uh, uh, in Hollywood at the Chinese theater, and. Uh, and um, and I was taking photographs of the band, being photographed by all these uh, photographers. I have Neil Preston is amongst there, you know. That, the, and uh, and uh, and uh, Gene Simmons saw me, and the uh, and the, so he 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 called me up, and uh, and I told him I was an Italian journalist. He said, "Oh, come to the Santa Marquise," he goes, you know. We stay in the San Marquis. So, and uh, I had this fantastic interview, and then he invited me over down to to uh, to the forum uh, that night where they were playing, and he did this amazing show for me. The, the blood, uh, it, 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 uh, I got so many pictures. I only have a few. The, it's funny because at the time, you know, I'm in my you know I'm in my late twenties, early thirties, and I'm having fun. And nobody, I tell you, nobody would have thought in 2020 people were still enjoying these concerts. There you are, uh, Gene Simmel giving him the, the shot. And uh, so I was shooting slides and I was giving out the slides to go with my article. Then I would go to Japan and I would give them to sell them to the record companies. Blah, blah. I, was, I was making, a, I was having fun. I was making a good living, you know, but uh, some of these photographs uh, was very difficult to keep the best picture for yourself because you wanted to see them published, you know. And uh, so uh, I thought I didn't have 
enough pictures to do a book because the best pictures went out of my way, you know, but uh, now the time has gone. I think uh, I can I can still do with this picture and I think these pictures are amazing to see them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty amazing. Hey, Armando, I'm getting some uh, uh, online uh, chatter about the event. Apparently people are really liking this. Um, my friend right. Nick really loves the, the KISS uh, images. So say hello to Nick. I think he uh, he would appreciate that. Hey Nick, where are you from? <laughs> Nick is from Australia. He can't. He's not on with us. Wonderful, oh, wonderful person. So, all right, hey, Nick. All right, mate. We're gonna bring you on next, okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's find a couple more photos. Let's see here. Oh, this is too much fun. We could do this forever. Oh yeah, this is good. Okay. Right, right. I'm gonna check the messages afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we will. Wow. Yeah, tell me about this one, Armando. Uh, it's funny because you can, in this actual photo, you can see her fingers, you know, and you can see, this is to me, uh, this is uh, the second tour of uh, Madonna. This is 1987 and we are here, we are probably, uh, I wonder, it might be at the Kennedy Stadium in Washington, uh, because I'm shooting from below the stage. Anyway, I did three concerts there. I, I, I photographed a concert in, on the very first tour. I, I went on the set of Desperately Seeking Susan because I was very good friend with uh, Rosanna Arquette and she was shooting this movie and she said, you have to meet this Italian girl, you know, probably, nah, 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 I don't want to see anything. No, she, I thought it was Madonna, you know, she's going to be a tool, she's going to be big, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and, uh, it's, and it's funny enough, you know, she went on tour the following year and uh, which must have been 1985 and uh, the Like a Virgin tour. And she was fantastic. You know, she was better than I ever saw afterwards because she was so grateful to be on stage, you know. This is the second tour. She already changed, you know. And uh, I went on tour there. I went to shoot pictures for, uh, for uh, the management and the, the, the and, uh, but after the third tour, you know, she, you couldn't talk to her unless she talked to you. You know, I said, God, is she the queen of England, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I, I left, the, uh, uh, there was the photo of July the following day. So I left and uh, came to Los Angeles to spend the photo of July with friends. And, uh, and, uh, and this particular photograph, uh, I used it for photo magazine. I did a big article in Italy and uh, because I couldn't understand you hire a photographer and then you can't even have a conversation, blah, blah, blah. You know, later on she was better, but that, it was a, a very strange time. Um, Sean Penn was there and uh, it wasn't a very good atmosphere. You know, it was really uh, not enjoyable. I just came off the tour with, uh, uh, with you two and uh, and I remember regretting to go on this date to Madonna because, in, and, uh, and, and I didn't go to Dublin to shoot you two in Dublin on the same dates, but there you go, you know. So this was a, a, a cover of Photo Magazine in Italy and the article, they, they, put, they did a title, A, uh, a Capricious Rockstar. <laughs> So, um, Armando, we're coming, well, it's 5.45, we're coming up on the hour, and uh, it was supposed to be a half hour conversation, which is like ironic because mostly any of the time I, uh, you and I get together, it's- uh, I would like so, to, I've got some inquiries here, you know, you know, the, the Genesis book that I, that I did in England and I did for America and, uh, and, uh, and I stopped the printing in the eighties, you know, uh, um, for various reasons, you know, and uh, and in something like 20, uh, uh, 10 years ago, 20, 20 years, 12, 15, 20, 20, 20, 20 years ago, yeah. I printed 3000 copies of the Genesis book in hardback. And, uh, yeah. and uh, we Paul White that we, we were listening to musical box and we did the cover, we redid the cover because the original cover 
was was this one. All right. And how did uh, you change the cover, Armando? Why did you change the cover? Because I mean, the because uh, this book was really written for Peter Gabriel. You know, when Peter Gabriel left the band, the band went on to be bigger than ever. Big, all, all the work, you know, Peter did five albums with them, you know, and they put so much work, you know, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway was a very difficult album, but a very, very iconic rock album. It can be amongst the top albums of every chart, you know, and, uh, and the, Genesis could have done any album, they would have sold a lot. And that's what happened with The Trick of a Tale. In the meantime, Peter took a year off. He was trying to get a, a publishing deal to get some advance money to uh, finance his first solo album. And he found a lot of publisher uh, didn't believe so much in his talent because, you know, the band went on to be bigger than ever. So I decided to I decided to do a, a Peter Gabriel's book. So when years later, when I had to reprint some of the Genesis book, I wanted to give the real cover of what I meant with this book. And this is Peter with all his uh, costume and, and things, you know, and uh, the other guys in the band didn't. But you can see the back cover is, uh, is still coming through. <laughs> nice. Oh my goodness. So this is, I have uh, the last few copies of this. This book never went on sale. There were 3,000 copies and it went to the real Genesis fans, you know, uh, people that, uh, people had to find me, had to, write, had to write to me and then I would write to them, tell them how much, uh, to, where to send the money and then I would send the book. And uh, so I had this amazing contact with the best Genesis fans. They're the same fans that helped me then to Put together a the genesis app so what you just said is we're going to give your email and your contact information and anybody that is a true genesis fan can write yeah. you to receive a, a copy of the book is that right no they have to pay for it because otherwise well, my course, wife no of course no we're not giving anything away <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay Armando, and, uh, and also i would like to tell people that I found an old message here that said can i have any prints from the from the genesis book you know if i ask you for a print of course i can you know but you have to pay for it you know because i have to i have to pay someone to print it <laughs> yeah absolutely, absolutely. And armando come on i mean the level of access that you have and the history that you have yeah that's very meaningful and you know, obviously very well, valuable. These, days, these days with internet and everything, you know, the, somehow people think that everything is free, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, okay. but if, you want a, if you want an art print, I have to give it to someone, to an artisan that will do an art print for you and that costs money, you know? So aside from you and McGregor, we've pretty much been concentrating on, on music. Um, and obviously your career spans, you know, entertainment as a whole. So you do a lot of work in, in Hollywood, but I think there's one very meaningful picture. I don't think we showed it last time. Let me see if I can download it. It's on the on the cloud here. There we go. Oh, wow. This is the the only time that this is uh, this full of, you know, for, uh, 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 what, like for, uh, 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 there's this, an Italian saying, La Fortuna di Vigliadac. Uh, uh, fortune is helped by the audacious, you know. Here I'm on the set of James Bond. Uh, Roger Moore has been uh, is shooting the very first James Bond after Sean Connery. And I am in, in, in London. I'm probably 27, 28. I've been doing uh, rock and roll uh, reports and stuff like that. And uh, and uh, my mom reads this, has been reading this magazine forever. And this magazine is going, is going really up. It's going to get towards the 1 million copies a week. And I'm selling photographs to the record companies in Italy. And this magazine gets the pictures for free from the record company. And they put my name, Photo by Armando Gallo. I said, wow, I'm realizing that probably I'm making a name for myself, otherwise I wouldn't put my name. Uh, and, and so I, 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 
I have the opportunity here to go on the set, it, as I'm thinking, if I go on the set of, of uh, James Bond to do an interview with Roger Moore, which is my idol because I've been following him since I was a little kid for a TV show called Ivanhoe. If I go to, uh, if I do an interview with Roger Moore, I can, and then I offer it to Sorise Canzoni. I'm, I'm sure I'm getting published. And so I go on the set and uh, on the set comes his wife. He's married, he was married to an Italian uh, artist called, an Italian actress called Luisa Mattioli. And she came with this little kid. And uh, I have to find out the name of this kid. Now he must be 50 years of age, 40, 45. Anyway, so I took this picture and then I have also a photograph of uh, Roger Moore, Luisa Mattioli and the baby on the set of James Bond. You know, this, this is uh, my good fortune. Oh, there you go, you know. Uh, the, anybody can tell you that you cannot take pictures on a movie set without incredible permission because they don't want to let anything out. But I was able to do it. It was the first time I visited a film set. I shot pictures and I got it published in the new up, upcoming weekly magazine. And with that magazine, I came to Los Angeles and I worked for Sorizio Canzoni for 35 years as a Hollywood correspondent. So there you go. So there you go. I didn't know, I didn't know you had this picture, man. I, you gave me, you gave me. I know, I know, no, you, you know, I, I didn't give it to you. You came and picked up all this picture <laughs> with, with, with the help of my wife and uh, I gave it to you because I can trust you. <laughs> yes, yes, you can. I'm grateful for that. Thank you. That's uh, it's an honor. Um, I think. Oh, let me see if I can find this one. Hang on, Armando. Oh dear. Yeah, now in Wikipedia, you can find you. you can go to Roger Moore and find out who that kid was. You just make too many. Seventy-four, probably. Yeah, seventy-four. All right. All right. So I can't find what I'm looking for at the moment, but let me. Um, Let's see where let's let's do one more. I think we can do one more here. Now, oh yeah, this is a cool picture. Uh, this is the forum, probably 1977, something like that. You know, and uh, Queen at their best, they were exploding here, man. You know, they were actually they played Santa Monica first, and I was totally mesmerized. You know, and. Uh, I went there with someone from the record company. He called me up, hey, I have two tickets. You want to come with me, you know? And uh, the first time I saw Queen, you know, I saw them in London before they make it big, you know? And I thought this guy was kind of strange, you know, because I have a photograph, in fact, of him uh, that I took in probably in 1972, you know? And uh, he, I, I put the camera on him and he just had a cup of tea and he put it in front of his face because he was very conscious of his teeth. Uh, yes, very funny, back teeth, you know, and uh, and uh, and I thought, you know, God, you know what? I did this this photograph for a Finnish magazine, you know, the, the editor came over and he hired me as a photographer. So I thought, why why you like this band, you know? And uh, but there was something that I understood there that, that John Anthony was uh, uh, doing uh, those uh, recording. John Anthony uh, uh, kind of created. Uh, uh, the very early uh, Queen sound. Then they went with someone else, you know, and, uh, and John Anthony was the guy that recorded uh, the first two albums of Genesis. And uh, he came up with this amazing sound. Uh, at the time, we're talking about 1971, 72, the sound that goes from one speaker to another, you know, and uh, they show it on the, in the movie. But they show in a silly way, like they hang this, uh, they hang this, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this speaker, and the speaker just go one way and another. No, 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 no. It wasn't done like that. Was everything was engineered uh, by by John Anthony. In fact, you can you can hear the sound before that album of of, of Queen. You can hear it in the musical box, which is the opening track of Nursery Crime of Genesis. There's the guitar of Steve Akin that goes from one speaker to another. 1971, before 
dark side of the moon. The, the stereo effect was just uh, something unheard of, you know. Well, this is just a great photograph, man. <laughs> yeah. This is again at the forum. And you talk about Steve Hackett. I mean, I think, um, you know, a lot of people don't really attribute him to... Um, One of the know, best guitarists in the world. Amazing, amazing guitarist. I mean, just his... Oh, <laughs> Yeah, just let's leave yeah. it. Yeah, it's someone. It's someone that he was a late starter. You know, he didn't have much confidence at the beginning, but now you know he's uh, he's seventy and he's so prolific and he's so creative. You know, and uh, and it's very difficult. You know, God bless him because you know. Uh, I remember when he was young, he couldn't understand where his 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 talent was coming. In 1977, when I was doing this interview, he doesn't remember that, but I got it on tape. He said, bro, sometimes I dream about these things. Sometimes I think that probably I was a musician in the 17th century, you know, at the Royal Rock, you know. And he said, did I tell you that? <laughs> because he was, in a way, when you really pick up your guitar and you come up with this incredible stuff, you know, and, and you didn't copy from someone else, you know? You know, no. Richie Blackmore is another great guitarist, but he told me that he stole a lot of stuff from uh, uh, from Bach, and and you know the all the, the the organ playing of of, of Bach. You know, try and do those uh, with the guitar, and you hear the uh, uh, purple and Richie Blackmore, Richie Blackmore Rainbow. You know, and uh, but in the in the case of 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 Steve Ackett, he's just one of the most wonderful human being, very, very generous, you know, I don't know how he does it, he has always time for everybody. He's the only rock star in a way that picked me up from the airport in London, you know, and sometimes we couldn't see each other, you know, and he comes to the airport where I'm leaving London to, to get together, you know, who does that? Who does that? Hey, Armando. So we're coming up. Language, probably, That's... but you know, at the same time, it's, we are very busy. He's a very busy man, you know. And uh, but he finds time, you know. And uh, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, we should we should try to bring him on uh, for the next conversation if we can. Ooh, that um, would be nice. Huh? Would that, that be cool? Be nice. Yeah. Yeah. So guess what? We're right at the top of the hour. You ran long last time, Armando. Imagine that. Wow. Good. Wow. <laughs> All right. Hey, Chris, thank you very much for, you know, you called me up last night and, I'm, and, and I said, yes, let's do it, you know, and then uh, nothing, nothing prepared. All this is genuine and uh, organic, as they say, even if yeah. I don't play the organs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll definitely do it again. Um, just to remind folks uh, on the, um, I started a, a group, a Facebook group uh, conversation with, I'm going to be doing this a lot more with, uh, you know, Armando and, and some other friends of mine that uh, uh, I haven't reached out to yet. So if I reach out to you, please say yes. Yeah. Um, I won't say names yet. But long story short is the reason we're doing this uh, is because we're in lockdown right now and we're just trying to make good uh, of time, you know, at home. Uh, not going crazy enough. You know, I just wanted to share to the, you know, share with the world what I've got to experience for the last, how long have I known you, Armando? Like 20 years, I think. I'm um, 15 years now, I think um and uh it's pretty pretty fun stuff but most important part uh go to the site uh no kid hungry make a few dollars donation um i was so thrilled i, I was so tickled to find out that uh it had reached uh, 125 dollars um so that's that's really good stuff what do you think armando pretty pretty cool stuff we're doing yeah here. and i said and i said you know if uh if, if someone wants a good a good print you know and uh and uh, i'll, I'll I will I will give that amount uh, paid for the print, you know, to to the kids, to the hungry kids. Fantastic. Okay, that's beautiful, Armando. So, how do we end? My book, if I have my Genesis books or the Peter Gabriel's book or stuff, you know, pick up one of the photos you want to. Otherwise, if you want any Bob Marley or stuff like that. Right? Armando Gallo photo, photo shelter. Oh, Armando Gallo photo shelter. There's, my wife put together some picture in Armando Gallo's photo shelter. I don't know what it is, you know, but uh, AmandaPhotoShelters.com. Well, otherwise, you know, write to me. Uh, my email, my email is A R G A L L O Argalo A R G A L L O at AOL 
Facebook.com, this old AOL, American Online. <laughs> or, or, or you can also go to, uh, I have a, a, a dead uh, uh, website. I don't have time to go on the website, but you can write me there, you know, and uh, armandogallo.com, Armando yeah. And, so, uh, uh, Armando. You can find me, Google me. You know, we're so we're, we're going to make sure people know how to get to you, Armando. Okay. Because I see a lot of pictures that people have been pictures. stealing. <laughs> but, All your stolen pictures are there. Yeah. But don't Anybody. steal pictures. Don't steal pictures. Yeah, Please. because listen, if you if you buy the pictures, I'm going to give percentage, a good percentage. I can share 50 50 to, to uh, 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 kids, uh, kids in, in need, you know? And uh, let's uh, let's be generous here, you know, and let's let's be correct, you know. Cor that's perfectly said, Armando. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and close, Armando. How do we normally close our conversations? I don't know. See you I next time. You. I see you next time. I love you. Ciao. Yeah, and Armando doesn't say goodbye. Peace out. Ciao. Peace, love, rock and roll, rock and roll. <laughs> Come on. I'm gonna have a beer now. I'm gonna have a Guinness. Okay. Cheers, Armando. Ciao. Stay safe and stay healthy, and love and love and respect the people you love and the people that you hate too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Let's get out of here, Armando. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Good.